alternative dig talk real issues real talk fellow citizens following the sequence of events uganda seems to be at political crossroads <laughs> I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation as he confirms i'll be always here saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel Okay. Our viewers, good morning uh, once again, and uh, I welcome you for having watched and followed the mighty drive in the morning. Uh, now we are with Justice Kanyihamba, as always every Wednesday. We come here for him to share with the world, given his experience. I will ask him to say hello straight away to our viewers. Hello, viewers. Nice to hear you are there somewhere. Okay. Uh, off record, he said he's not well, he's annoyed, so he will tell us why he's, why he's annoyed. But to begin with, we want to definitely thank you, whoever is contributing, what you're doing that, uh, to ensure that our country is better than yesterday. Thank you. And we continue to condemn whoever is doing nothing or, uh, or any contributions that are negative and take our country back. Shame upon you, given your age and your positions, wherever you are. We are not happy with you, and all of us will never be happy with you, given your negative contributions. But to those that are doing great, may you forever live and be blessed and be strong to ensure that our country is better for us, our children and grandchildren. Otherwise, if you mess it up, your grandchildren will live in a, a ramshackled country, for lack of another word. Justice Kanyahamba, I want to begin on a light, and either light or otherwise not. You have had, uh, I'm sure you have had, uh, from either media houses or other uh, other broadcasters about who qualifies to be your son, given your age and given his age. That is a, a four-star general, Mohozi. He tweeted and said he was he was uh, he wasn't in a, in good terms with those that are fighting the M23, and he said whoever is fighting them is really doing something bad because they are fighting for the rights of the two C. In DRC. Let us begin from that. You know, for me as a Ugandan, I very much pity General Mbozi. He's like a fish out of water. Currently, the commander in chief of the Uganda Army, President Museven, is fighting that. Else, 23, M23, yeah. M23, which is a rebel group mm -hmm. in uh, the Republic of Congo, wishing to oust that government. Mm -hmm. So, Mohose's father, General Museveni, mm -hmm. is fighting <coughs> that group so that they don't succeed in overthrowing. A legitimate government. The legitimate government of Check it. DLC. Now, only a few weeks ago, Jim Hose blundered by bragging that he's going to attack Kenya, our closest and dearest ally, ally and that he would do defeat that uh, Kenya within a period of about two weeks. Then President Museveni 
our president, the army in chief, rather the commander in chief of the Uganda army, said, apologizes for what his assignment was said. But whether he fears his son, I don't know. In the same breath, he immediately recommended, I rather appointed him, general. Foster general. Uh, nowhere in the world, either under African culture, Indian culture, European, or Polynesian culture, do you demolish your son for making a mistake, a ghastly mistake, and then in the same breath appoint him general? So Muhoz seemed to have something against his father, President Museveni. And what you have told me, I didn't read it in the social media, proves what I am saying. That uh, Museveni now fears his son. How can your son say you are making a mistake in fighting the rebels, our brothers in the Congo, but you are with the whole community of East Africa fighting the same group? And you keep him gin. Yeah, I, want, uh, I want to be particular. Mm -hmm. This is his tweet. He said, as for M23, I think it is very, very dangerous for anybody to fight those brothers of ours. I don't know what he means with when he says ours. They are not terrorists. In fact, he put in not in capital letters. They are fighting for the rights of the Tutsi in India. Let's see. Over who? Tutsi. The Tutsi tribe. Are uh, they Tutsi? Yeah, by looks. I don't want to be scientist <laughs> to say they are. But by Let looks. Let me tell you. The person who is fighting those people mm. is the president himself. Yes. And the son Therefore, when he says it is very dangerous anybody. to f for fight those people, he means his father. <laughs> it is very dangerous, according to Mohozi, for his father. father to fight those people. That's number one. Number two, mm. I don't know their background. But we are in association and uh, partnership with the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo. So if you support those rebels, you are obviously against the government of the DLC. And the entire treaty because... Yes, uh, and against <coughs> the treaty, against the whole of East Africa. So I want those who think that Museven can, rather Mohozi can succeed his, his father, or that Museven is working for him, to think again. Because everything we see in black and white, in the voice, is contrary to that kind of scenario. Secondly, some of us believe that the President Museven He's not going to hand over to anybody. He wants to die in office. Of course he will die. He's a human being. There's no way he can continue. He's not immortal. Uh, he's 81 now. Because Bonafaz Bianima. Are you defaming him? Told me when I was in my 40s. He said, Kanyamba, how old are you? I said, I said I was 42. He said, oh, you are only two years older than my protege, Museveni. <laughs> so you either believe rumors yeah, or, believe or you believe the animal. The former, uh, a yes, citizen. yes. Having said that, Museveni himself said in the Master's Seed, which I believe you have written in a book saying, Any Master's Seed, uh, rather, Any I'm Master's sorry. King, the Master's Seed. He said, I don't know when I was born. Mm -hmm. I was born maybe about the, during the war, which I, I was also born mm -hmm. when the war was beginning in 1939. So might have been born two years later, which is 41. He's exactly the same age as my wife. 
<laughs> and my wife should know better because she's originally English and therefore they knew how to uh, record their birthday there. So having said that, my view is sooner or later, and I hope it will never happen, because we will be working very hard to, up, to up overthrow Museveni from power. Is it? Uh, because he is anxious to be president. But Museveni is also anxious to remain president <laughs> until he dies. So we have two ambitious people, one aged 81. Yeah. Anxious to remain president. Yes. The other one, aged the close to fifty, anxious yes. also become president. anxious to become president. So where, where, where does that leave a country like Uganda, who's uh, in totally quite chaos and the confusion? Do you seem to suggest that there could be a conflict within that state house as a house? It's already there. When. Uh, the friends of Mhozi made the parties for him throughout the country. Led by his uncles, by the way, a one Toyota and, uh, yes. and others. Yes. Uh, led by those. Uh, Museven didn't appear. Mm. He recently said, I am coming, becoming president to honor my mother. Mm. But when you read, that's a document he, he put on social media. Mm. You have no doubt that he's talking about two people. Mm. Janet Museven and somebody else I don't know, but uh, somebody wrote one long time ago to say she was called Hope. Mm. Uh, so that, read it again. Any intelligent man says, this man is talking about two people. Gentle Museveni, he calls my mother, and then in the memory of my mother, that is a different person. I but uh, bi biologically, what can, one can't be mothered by two, by two ladies. One could be, I mean, you either have, it must be one mother, you can't have two mothers. No, no, but in, in the Chiganda custom, you can have is, is using, your real mother is your mother. And then the sister of your mother, your mother, mother is your mother. also your mother. <laughs> okay. So you can have two mothers. Let's leave that to that. Yes. Okay, we, so if I may ask, uh, uh, some people have suggested that there are those moments where the president uh, uh, I mean, uses some stories or events as a decoy. Because when he was recruiting the son into UPDF, and when they asked the minister of defense at that time, he said, look, this, my son is rather joining uh, local defense, LODU. Before we know it, the man was far away in Sunhurst and comes here as a cadet officer, fully decorated. So couldn't that also be a diversion that they try to confuse the public? And maybe one shows that they are against... He the has other. already confused the public. <laughs> the public has seen he will be succeeded by his son. Many people who don't think hard enough think that is true. So they're saying, after all, he's going to be succeeded by his son. So I'm saving his only year for a short time. But some of us who, knows, who know him better, we know he doesn't want to leave office. That is why a, the youth recently said they want him to stand in 2026. Uh, they are not, if he was going to groom his son, they would have been saying, Mr. President, we agree with you that your son should become the president. No, that is not there at all. What's your message towards such youth that we are supporting, that are already advocating for his return? But what I have said, and I said again, and I think I gave you a copy of the book, but you told me that some people... Uh, uh, rather uh, smuggled your books out. Maybe you don't have it. It's called The Defeat of President Yoweri okay. Kabuta Museveni. That's the title of the book. And in that book I say, now, 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 not tomorrow, 
not uh, when 26 is coming, but today as I speak with you. Let you kind of take the scene. President Museveni, you should retire now. Then we shall discuss whether it should be his son or BCJ or Chagulanye or, or even the Mao who will replace him or some other politician. I would like a younger one to be the one to replace him. But not so that, that question is open. Who will succeed in saving is an open question. I want Ugandans to start discussing it. And why do I say that? When I took in my books with one of them, the defeat of President Museven in the war against corruption, a young cadet at State House in Nakasero stopped those books which I had sent with my note from reaching President Museven. And he said, <coughs> Kanyihamba is subversive. We can't allow Museven to, write, to, to read his books. publication. That is a young soldier. Museveni never saw them. So I used another way. <laughs> and I believe he read that book. After he read it, he himself initiated the discussion about his retirement and his succession. You saw it in headline, I think in Monitor or New Vision. So I am glad, Mr. President, and I thank you for taking my advice and allowing the country to discuss, to discuss retirement. Yes. If I may ask, uh, I am sure you watch, it, the, you watch TV here. Yes. And you have watched attacks onto the police posts. In On the what? Police posts. Yes. In particular, there, is, uh, there are those in Iduero and other places. And these attackers come and take they take they go away with the guns yes do you think that could be connected to the overstay of your friend in leadership who oh, yes you see let me give you an example my land was grabbed about two weeks ago by a man called bazir the former mayor of Interior municipality who campaigns all the time that the Museveni and I should be liquidated because for him we were better off under colonialism and the okay. Kanyamba chaired the legal and drafting committee which returned Uganda to be independent. Museveni should have fought to, to, to restore Uganda into colonialism. And he did it. So Mazira hates both of us. That's number one. So recently, he collabed, collaborated with the foreigner by the name of Sasu, engineer Sasu, Nairo Construction. And the Sasu, who is the foreigner, is my tenant. Mazira said, he sold him the my right. tenants, which is illegal. For a foreigner to... In our law, that foreigner of automatically forfeits any rights he had in my land. When I sold part of my land, rather, I rented part of my land because foreigners cannot buy land yeah. in longer, except they can be given lease. a lease. What he got from me as a, my tenant was a land zoned agriculture. He bought from me, rather he inherited from me, the land which there were goats, pigs, chickens, and uh, other animals. So I expected that that's what he would do. But uh, Nile Construction and the Sassu are constructing a housing estate there. In your land? In, the in my, in, no, in the land I rented him. 
the part um, of my land I rented him. He's without my authority. And the law says, Amendment Act, the, the Land Amendment Act, Section 40, read it when you follow here. That if a foreigner defies it, the landlord and develops the land contrary to what the landlord wants him to do, he forfeits any rights in that land. And then the land of to the to their Ugandan landowner. I reported this to the Ministry of Lands. I reported it to what they call the anti-corruption unit of the president. <laughs> I reported it to the land unit enforcement unit of the prime minister. And lo and behold. The others are, have not done anything. I reported to Kasigazi. The deputy IGP. The deputy IGP. inspector of police. And he was supposed to send me <coughs> police, a contingent of police, to guard me when I was demonstrating the powers and functions of the LC ones. In Uganda. We shall talk about that. Uh, uh, okay, let uh, me wait. So, what I'm telling you, one police officer called Kumakech in the charge of Kajansi. The one you said you will never forget. When I said, why did you send people with the machine guns to protect a thief who had stolen my land? They were witnesses, so this is the. He said, "I can't walk," so he came in my car. Say, professor, can we go to your house? And they said, "We're with you, so you forget about Bazira." In which capacity? I said, "What are you talking about?" In which capacity did he want to 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 settle? To bribe me, he was offering me bribe of half a million. Half a million, uh, half a billion shillings. In which capacity? Because this is a police officer, and uh, who's in the going capacity to... of a corrupt official, <laughs> <laughs> corrupting you on whose behalf? Because literally, you said he's he a wanted officer. me to forget Bazira and the, this. What is happening in my land? He will come to my house and pay me the initial payment. Of mm, 1.5 billion shillings. I say, where does a, an officer of your police. caliber get that kind of money from? He said, there is a police fund. <laughs> so there is a, a, a police, police fund. fund which will be paid. <laughs> that one, the Inspector General of Police must have known. I told it to the Senior presidential advisor on the veteran affairs. I told the minister of land, but the man today, as I speak, he's continuing to develop my land. I'm told he's now constructing a, a road in my land, and those people are keeping quiet. I went to the presidential uh, anti corruption yes, unit, yes. he's chaired by a, a general. And they said we are going to work on that one. They have kept quiet. So if I was bribed with half a billion, I think for them it must be in the billions. Well, they are doing nothing as we speak. If you want, we can go to my land. I want you will find it is protected by men armed with the machine gun. I want to, 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 to put the land question onto a hold. We shall tackle it before we leave here. Okay. But to take you back into the insurgencies that are happening, especially with gun grabbing. You know, yes. leave alone the land grabbing now. Yes. The gun grabbing by uh, some criminals, for lack of another word. Mm. And apparently there are those already in the general court martial and uh, who are being <coughs> tried uh, for treason. Mm -hmm. And my question was and still remains, do you think such, I can't call them isolated cases, but such attacks to police, could that be a result of the overstay, of the person you brought? Over what? The overstay. 
Mm -hmm. Over the person you brought in power. Well, it's, it's part of the reason, certainly. No question about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be campaigning for every, for every gun to say, retire okay. now, because he's overstayed. But moreover, they are using his own message. Yeah, sure. Remember, he was known as a bandit. <laughs> and uh, the first item we know is when they attacked uh, Obote's soldiers. This is Kabumba. Right? Kabamba. 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 Yeah. They are using the same methods as President Museveni used. So it is not surprising that they are using the same tactics. That uh, when Museveni got fed up with the Amin and, and the Bote government, he used precisely the same method the and he was known as a bandit. But he succeeded. I hope those that will not succeed, I don't know them. But uh, whether they are rebels from Uganda or from Congo, I don't want them to succeed. I want a democracy to, to be restored in this country and in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, in this case, uh, I sympathize with Moses' attack on his father. <laughs> that maybe those people are more democratic mm -hmm. than we have had us in the Congo before. What would be your view? Because you have attacks here and there. Days later, the police of Uganda closes over 1,000 police posts. And I'm sure you watched such stories. So who is fooling who? Museven is pulling groups. Because not very far, he said, the police are the most corrupt institution in Uganda. Those are the words of President Museveni. Mm. The police are the most corrupt institution in the country. But how many has he sacked? More importantly, my cousin, my cousin is called uh, Major General Kahindo Tafide. Mm. He has stolen my mind. He hasn't stolen me. He owes me one. Uh, he owes me uh, two million and fifty, two hundred and fifty million, and he admits. But when they, he at one time he was not on good terms with the president Museveni. But when he won the election last time, using my money, ten million which government gave me to go to for hospitalization. They, they gave it to Kakain Dottafide, who was then Minister of Justice. Of Justice. <clears throat> Up to now, why don't you ask him, how did he convert my check into his own money for campaign? So they told him, as other people are telling people, that the Kenyan is on his last legs, he will not last long. So he said nobody would ever ask him about stealing ten my 10 million shillings given to me through the good offices of Hakan Rukunda, the then Prime Minister. He stole that. So he, he defied the Prime Minister and stole from his own cousin, Kanye Hamba. What kind of country are we running, my friend? John, he's the one heading the internal affairs. <laughs> I want to ask you the legal interpretation mm -hmm. I know that you know you lost your friend, the former governor, Bank of Uganda. A one to Musime Mutebi, it's coming to a year. We lost him around February. Yeah, um, late February this year. To date, Uganda is being run without a governor. What does the law say? The law says when the governor dies or is incapacitated, his deputy, we have a deputy, acts as governor while they are looking for another suitable governor. Mm. Not for you. Months and months. We are talking about a few days or weeks. So the fact that uh, there has been no governor for a long, long time is definitely unconstitutional. Because our constitution says there shall be a governor of the central bank. At the moment, we don't have any. I have not heard that even the President Museveni has asked his deputy to be acting. No. 
So it is unconstitutional, it is illegal, it is the law of the jungle being perpetrated in the power of Africa, the most beautiful republic, this side of paradise. But it is being misgoverned, mishandled, and intimidated. I want to give you a very good example. And I'm not keeping the secret. The Court of Appeal, which I think is very, very well manned with principles, principal domain, and the professionals, under the leadership of Richard Abutea, the Deputy Chief Prime Minister. Justice. The Deputy Chief Justice. Summoned me to a case which has been pending for eight years. When they find it there, these good judges say, we must hear this one. It is against a man who everybody knows is not very honest. So when I went to court, first of all, the registrar deliberately put the case on the day I was supposed to go for a checkup in the hospital. So she deliberately fixed it on that day. And she called the other people. Your case will be on Tuesday, which was yesterday. Are you meaning that case that has been there for the 80 years? Yes. So we are going to, what they call, have, what they call a scheduling meeting. When I got there, for me I had been served. The lawyers for that gentleman and the attorney general said for them they had not been served. In other words, the registry of the court had served me, and it served but had not served the other. That is a fact. Because they complained yesterday they were not served. But when I went to hearing, the registry was not there. There was an assistant at the registry. Yesterday? Yes. So I turned up. They didn't expect me because they thought I was in the hospital. So, so that regi assistant registry said, what are you doing here, Professor Kanyama? <laughs> I said, excuse me, I have come for our scheduling meeting. In other words, you are boosted them. But are you listen, what happens in this part of Africa? <laughs> Before we could do anything, all the other lawyers came representing that man. Whom, representing they, didn't said, hmm? Whom they didn't serve. Yeah, and they said, we have not been served. <laughs> Say, how did they come? <laughs> but they were not served. In other words, words, you have written in the, the Bible idea Africa. was mm. Kanyama will not be here because he's in the hospital. They told the Mubaba they come and <laughs> we finish your case. <laughs> <laughs> but the God works me seriously. So did you dream of uh, I mean how did you get the guts to to, to ambush them? Because my you friend, say, you say you say people don't know. <laughs> I have my friends in the state house. In the Prime Minister's <laughs> office, in the judiciary, <laughs> I haven't lived that long without intelligence. Mm. So I knew, mm. and the doctors were very magnetic. I want to thank the doctors, especially at Nakasero, but even at La Memorio, at Mulago, and at uh, uh, another setup which is in Kalikamusa. They've been wonderful. When we went to see who has stolen my land, and they put it on the wrong way, doctors came with me and nursing to watch what's happening. And that saw a uh, police officer who said, if you take another step, Kanyamba, we shall shoot. It's still there, guiding that property. So, but that's what I was telling you. What transpired I knew. That they were not, they, they fixed the case on the day I was going to check up in the hospital. And somebody told me from the registry, then I bush, bushed, them. what is the word? Ambushed them. I ambushed them. The girl who was representing one of the, she nearly collapsed there. <laughs> in fact, the people, my people were will tell you, said, please, my daughter, what's wrong with you? You seem to be fainting. <laughs> So that's how I knew. 
and they can never ambush you. So I you know that, that when you have corrupt registrar, they can doctor your uh, your, your, your papers. And the rest. So the papers I wrote because the court has allowed me to file my submissions in writing. So I have given copies to the judges who will be on that case beforehand. And I've given a copy to the chief justice, whom, by the way, I also have something to say about. And therefore, should the judges should the make a fault? Mm -hmm. I say, you ask the chief justice, the deputy chief justice, because they have copies of what I submitted to you. So where you know the people are corrupt, you don't go there and argue verbally. Because whoever is writing what you are writing, he will twist it. Since you see it against the other person, he will not write it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you charge it, you say, look at my notes. It's he never said that word. Because he will have deliberately left it up. So if you want your case not to be swept under the carpet, and the legal capital it puts everything in insist on, on written submissions you keep a copy you give a copy to all the panel on the case and to the uh, leading uh, authority there in this case uh, richard Butcher, uh, richard Butera. Butera, the deputy uh Chief deputy what do you call him? Deputy uh, Chief Justice. Chief Justice. Um, That's what I have done. Briefly, mm -hmm. I want to take you back to the illegality of a country being run without a, a governor yes. of the central bank. Mm. So who is to blame? Okay, the president hasn't appointed. Who should pester him to appoint one? Well, there is it the Minister uh, the of Finance? Minister is it of the Finance? Matia Kasaija? And the parliament itself, this matter should be tabled in the parliament and somebody moves that we want the president to appoint the governor on the recommendation of the relevant uh, committee in, with immediate effect. No, the parliament has the capacity to say not later than the end of this week. You should have, uh, yeah, because we have, uh, I'm told the deputy governor is very well qualified to be a governor. Mm -hmm. There are people like Kahosa, the and he was not corruptible in my days, mm -hmm. or oh, even Mahakanizi, who knows matters of the bank very well. But, uh, the deputy governor Mahakanizi has been in so many controversial qualified. Uh, even Dr. Suruma who is the vice chancellor of McKinley, is a brilliant economist. And he used to be the deputy governor of the Bank of Uganda. So he can also be appointed. Although there are many Bachiga in the government. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, it, I don't want you to sound hypothetical and speculative. Yes. Do you think there is any political motive uh, for the president to ignore that? Because oh, very much so. Even your friend Mao, that ministry had been reserved uh, for him. For yeah, I mean, not for him. Per President se, but it took long for. Clever, no, it took long to get. I am sure he was reserving, <laughs> persuading uh, Mao to become minister, 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 and as I have said, to be a fully qualified chamber, rather chairman, chairman which he is now. I want to apologize to him. It's not a good, very good term, but uh, my English is very limited. I couldn't find another one. Most suitable one. Most suitable one. So in your view, there should be some political so, motives for which... let me tell you. When President Museveni wants to run the show himself, and he wants to run the finances of this country himself, you don't appoint a governor. Because you are running the show yourself. Everything, if you look recently, the president has decided. The president has decided. The president has done this. 
even in education, my good friend, the Janet Museum, is a bypass. And uh, you hear the president has uh, done this in education. The president has appointed so and so to be director of education. The judges, he is only supposed to appoint those so nominated, nominated by, by the electoral commission. Judicial service commission. But if you read uh, Derika Chironga's article about the failings of the chief justice of Uganda, you will say that Musebi now nominates who to be judge or magistrate, and he appoints. So the chairman of the Judicial Service Commission is redundant. He does nothing. Because everything which the, the uh, Judicial Service Commission should be is done singly mm. by, by President, President but on the advice, of course, of the invisible, <laughs> rotten, and the corrupt officials. Okay, we are coming back in a minute. We're going to we are breaking and coming back in a minute. We are we shall tackle the land question, the uh, the powers of the LOC chairpersons in this country, uh, as per the constitution that Justice Kanyahamba and others drafted. But most importantly, I want to ask you as we come back, why did you give the president of the Republic of Uganda a minister, a ministerial job as a minister of defense of uh, of finance? Because literally, he's the renowned minister of finance and uh, that is uh, so the minister the known minister of finance acts on the behalf of the president is there any country on earth where its president is the overall minister of finance no. we are coming back uh -huh. we are coming, but this is your constitution that you made no. we are coming back <laughs> okay, no, a minute. No. Yeah, coming back shortly Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest Show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel the alternative dig talk real issues real talk Our viewers, we, we can't thank you enough for keeping it digital. And uh, we are back uh, on your social media handles. We stream live on our Facebook page, that's the Alternative Uganda, and also Digital TV. Minutes later, alone, the show, the same show, the same content will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, The Alternative Uganda. Before we went for a short break, we, uh, we, we had um, hot questions to Justice Kanyahamba as one of the framers of this constitution, 1995. By the way, it's not, a, it's not a, a disclaimer to say, but he says he believes in the 1995 constitution, not as amended, because literally, no, 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 no. in a law school, every when you are citing the constitution, they would ask us to say, the, 19, the Uganda constitution of 1995 as amended. No, I don't <laughs> So you don't believe in the amended valid and operational constitution of Uganda is that, old one? Is that of 1995, no amendment. But you gave provisions for amendments. 
Mm? You gave provisions for amendments in the same constitution. So why wouldn't you believe? I gave, we gave provisions for amendment, but those amendments must be submitted and discussed in accordance with, with the, the provision <laughs> of the constitution. The ones I have seen are smuggled in. In your, you mean in your view? Against and the provision of the constitution. Therefore, they are void and they are null and void. You could repeat that. You mean all the amendments you have had are illegal and unconstitutional in your view? Yes. Let me tell you one. And the way I think the, our chief justice is very weak. Which one? The, the, the removal of age limit. Mm -hmm. When they brought it up, cabinet rejected it. Led by the right honorable uh, Kategai. They rejected it. Which one I mean? The one of 2005? Oh, the the term, removing the term limits. Term, no, age. age limits. Age limits? Yeah, because the one of the term limits, my sister called Hope Nessie is the one who steered it in Parliament. And whenever she smiles, she's a very beautiful woman. People looked at her smiles. We must pass this law <laughs> without thinking the interest of Uganda. But this is a good joke alone. Now, he put it to members of parliament. The majority said, no, there is no way we can remove age limit when many younger people also become president. And the country anyway rejected it because insertion of it was approved universally by all the voters in CIGA of Uganda. So it was rejected by cabinet. Cabinet was rejected by parliament. But the president civil must always have his way. So what he did, he bribed the members of parliament, bribed sufficient number to pass the amendment. amendment to remove term limits with the five million dollars, five million shillings each. It's in the record. But you guys know, to mention it is treason. <laughs> <laughs> now having done that, then they amended the age limit. They removed it illegally by blood. If you so get something <laughs> by blood, that's illegally. That's why I'm rejecting all the, the amendment. amendments uh, which were engrossed on our constitution. Isn't there Another any? one will be five for gay. Every judgment we have, so-called judgment, which is wrong. The constitution, Article 104, let all you guys read it. Article 104, and it hasn't been amended. It says if there is a presidential challenge that uh, the candidate was not properly elected. The Supreme Court shall inquire, not here, inquire into the petition okay. and they give its findings, not judgment. <laughs> okay. Give its findings. So that one again, that's why I don't accept it. The term limit was illegally amended, being amended. removed. Age limit was the same. All the powers that the president is exercising today, he's exercising them illegally because there is no power which the president can exercise without being advised by another body. And he's to act in accordance with the advice of that body. That's what we put in the constitution. Okay. Uh, before we went for a break, we, we were asking Justice Kanyihamba to substantiate the reason for which they gave, the, the reason for which people think you gave the president too much powers. And I guess the point is that the Minister of Finance only acts on behalf of the president, and so is the Minister of Defense. Why in particular these two ministries? We have in this country a committee on finance. We have in the parliament a committee which deals with financial matters. 
The constitution we wrote says the president can exercise the financial matters in accordance with the advice, in accordance with the advice of those committees. So where did we say he should decide alone? We never did. He can only act in accordance with the advice of the education committee. He can only act in accordance with the council, army council on military matters. He can only act on appoint judges only. Magistrates are appointed by the election rather the judicial service, service commission. commission on advice of the commission. When I uh, uh, the late or uh, Mulenga were being appointed, we appointed with the judge of the court of appeal, uh, Amoka Rach who is now a judge of the Supreme Court, and I have never heard anything wrong about her. So she's a good woman, because she was, I was her mentor. <laughs> we were nominated by the Judicial Service Commission. I remember William Pike, my friend, who found who co-founded with me New Vision. New Vision which he doesn't publish in my name anymore. Uh, Pike said Kanyamba and the Justice and the George, uh, uh, Mulenga are very excellent men of integrity. But I don't think Parliament will elect, will uh, confirm, confirm. Mm. Not the President will not uh, appoint, will confirm their nomination because Kanyihamba is a pillar of the movement uh, party of which Museven is uh, chairman and Mulenga is the deputy president of DP. Mm. But when we were appointed, became judges regarding what we did. We are controversially the best judges this country has ever had. So in your view? Because when you become a judge, then you don't continue the being the and... president. You are now become a servant of the law and the justice. I That's know. why on serious occasions, serious occasions, as a lawyer, I have defeated the president himself. And he knows it. But the president doesn't talk about that. Have your colleagues mastered that uh, philosophy that once you are appointed a justice, you therefore serve the law, not the powers, not the appointing authority? Few of them have. As I speak now for recent uh, developments, I think the Court of Appeal judges generally are following that philosophy that when you are appointed, you become a servant of the law and the justice, and you don't continue being a cadre. The point of seven. And second, he, the role of him to appoint those who are nominated is compulsory. If we fail to appoint judges, we could impeach him for failing to do his duty. So appointing a judge, appointing a minister, responsible is a constitutional duty Museveni must perform. It's not a favor for anybody. He's not favoring me for appointing me a judge. He's not favoring you for appointing you a commander. He's not favoring anybody for appointing the governor who has been nominated by the parliament committee. I want everybody who is including the one who asks the question to remember. He can only act on the advice of either another committee or oh. of another body. If he appoints without any advice, that is unconstitutional. So can he humble, who is known to be a, a, a very good lawyer and a cold constitutional, I could never advise. So the president should appoint or promote anyone.
without the concurrent, rather without the recommendation or nomination of the relevant constitutional committee. Now that he has abused the such provisions, what happens? He's impeached. Do you see that house? <laughs> the impeachment is by parliament. If the president does something wrong, which is unconstitutional, which is illegal, which is criminal, then it is a parliament, not the court. It is a parliament which, under the trial of the president, is called impeachment. Mm. But they are all seeing seven is their God. So you cannot impeach your God. <laughs> Our viewers, you have heard from a senior citizen, um, in accordance to his words, he thinks uh, parliament and some other authorities find their appointing authority or their executive boss being their god. To ask to now go back to the, the constitution that you, you and others made in particular to tackle the powers of the LOC one, yeah. which you found, I think, after you had just captured power, you, you, you named them RSCs. Re, uh, resistance councils. That's right. Uh, until 1995, when you had the constitution, they became local councils, as in LOC. I think we should begin by finding out why did you, in the first place, establish the LOC? What was there before? Maybe, yeah, we could begin with what was there before. We have had One of time my, there was a divisor to Masuru Chikeri. Masuru Chikeri was the, our chairman of the external committee. Mm. And we discussed this at length. Mm. And we say, the LOC in the village, mm. in the village, mm. are the ones who know what happens there. If you go to buy land in the village, you call the chairman. To witness your call, you ask the, the, the LOC of Dewey. I have had the land there for over 20 years. I have never done anything without consulting the LOC or telling them I am renting this land. Or buying or, or selling. Whether I am buying, whether I am giving it away to my children, whether I am renting it. I always inform the LC. One, one. Because they are there. Where you are doing any business, the LC are with you every day. Yeah, the immediate the, 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 the first LC chairman, when I bought the land in the day way, was a man called uh, Chimera. He see you there, right? Elderly. Certainly. But he knows everything that I have ever done. Because I always reported to them, LOC, I'm going to do this here. Because how do they protect your property or your investment? And this they know you and they know you are the one who bought it. There is this notion mm -hmm. that you people founded LOC systems to help mobilize for NRM, which is more or less done. Because it's very hard to separate between an LOC chairperson from the NRM <laughs> leader at a local level. You see, they have been corrupted also. Not only that, but some of them, unless you support the NRM, mm. you are not appointed, rather you are not elected, elected. chairman or even a, a member of the Defense Council. Because our whole system, including the LOC, have been corrupted. It's like having the milk. You and I, we know what the milk is. Mm. You put there something for them. Like so. The milk will soon go bad. So you mean... That's what our government has gone. Uh, it was pure milk. Now it is <laughs> contaminated entirely by the powers that be. Because I'm going to tell you. The responsibilities of the powers of the LC before they were contaminated. I was here when the Prime Minister called Samson Kiseka 
very respected man, want to come and see his niece, nephew, who lives here. The LOC chairman stopped him. He said, who are you? <laughs> Identify yourself. That's the Prime Minister of Uganda. He like I said, you know me. And he was accompanied by the police. I am the Prime Minister of Uganda. He said, where are your identity? <laughs> the LOC chairman called Katende, John Katende, challenging him. Then Chiseka remembered, my minister, one of our ministers lives near here. They said, can you hamba? This LC chairman called me. Do you recognize this man? I said, my friend, that is my boss, the prime minister. Prime minister. Then he said, since Kanyihamba has identified you, we shall you allow you to proceed. As for the people of Kabad, in my village, when there is a case against me, I appear before the chairman. LC one. I don't go to court of appeal. I am a judge. Therefore, this case must be had by a land council and the magistrate. I don't. Many times I have appeared there. I have a nephew, blood and flesh, who has been the chairman of our area. He's the most, he's not corrupt, the most intimidated man in the world. <laughs> but he has been LOC chairman ever since the NLM came in. Because every time he goes to Stan, they say, ah, this is Kanyamba's nephew. We have to vote for him. They vote for him. Yes, he is. I have even put on his own nephew called Sisi to contest. To contest. And I have told the all there. Uh, he is my candidate. Vote for him. He's educated. The other man is not. Then, when the election came, they again elected Russian. You can see. Then they say, Kanyambi is trying to trap us. He still <laughs> supports this country. What's wrong with Uganda? <laughs> if I may ask, why? He has been LOC since he entered the came into power. But he's a team, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't hear your case. Even in mine, when I was disputing a neighbor, he feared to hear it. He never turned up. But he's rotten. But every time he wins, his majority increases. Because <laughs> when I ask him, why is it? Because he doesn't disturb us. He does nothing. Mm, so they want a dormant person. Yes. You, you said uh, in uh, this 1995 constitution, mm -hmm. as one of the framers, that the retired justice now, uh, Stephen Kavuma, suggested that the, the, the qualifications for for president and parliamentarians be a level. Who suggested that the, power, the qualifications for LOC1 be none? Because could that be one of the reasons for which they are incompetent? No, no, no. Kavuma was wrong. We had a campaign that MPs, LOC5s, should and have president. a degree. At first, that was your proposal. That was our proposal. As with Kavuma in uh, in uh, in uh, Kavuma part of Kavuma was the Minister of Constitutional Affairs. Yes, a junior minister, Minister of State. I was a, a full minister and others, but Kavuma and Mbabazi, hmm. Amama. Every time we defeated them, they would cock us again. <laughs> that we want it to be equivalent to A level. We would defeat them. They would cook us again. I think eventually people got tired in the parliament. I rather in the CA. said, let this pass. Yes. And then I think the last caucus of about fifth time, there were only about five people who attended. Let us were paid up. We finished that long term. And the five also agreed with the Kavuma and the Mbabazi that yes, let it be Hello. a equivalent and they came and announced in the session that the NRM wants a or equivalent because we caucus yesterday and the caucus oh, unanimously <laughs> <laughs> agreed avoid those words unanimous, unanimous. 
Nobody is ever unanimous. Even in the parliament, as we go there, some people are missing. Yeah, sure, so you yeah. can have uh, nobody who says it was unanimous. The only one I had here mm. was it was unanimous. But all those uh, to, to, to call this road the Kanyamba Road until you soon to come back. Because we have challenged the mayor, we have challenged the Lukwago, who approved it, and the Muchiga man who works as a public relations came and removed, removed the, the chapa Kanyamba at night, and they are they swearing again soon, could be there today or tomorrow. Now, what happened is, what was the for motive? For us, the LOC one is like a home. They all know each other, and if you don't corrupt them, they tell the truth, as they did with Chiseka, Mm -hmm. And me in Kabale, Kabale, in my village. This now is going to be my very village forever here. Because I put in the constitution the Ugandan is entitled to live and work anywhere in Uganda. So I am following my own provision and living here in Buziga for good. Now, having said that, all the things you are seeing today, made by the president, ordered by the president, are contrary to what we provide in the constitution and our laws. Especially, in, in, uh, if we talk about LSC1 chairman, these are your brothers and the uncles who know you since you were born. They know your character. They know whether you are a drunkard, or you are emotional, the lawyer who is representing you may be coming from Kabbalah. He's never heard of you. He doesn't know you. So how do you say, I am calling my lawyer to represent me in the magistrate's court, which is chaired by somebody from Tororo. They have never heard of you. How can they deal with matters which are intended for close related relatives at the That's LC1 chairman? Wouldn't you, if you had the room to, again, let me use the word that you'd like, to amend this constitution, do you think there would, you would propose that the LOC persons have qualifications? Perhaps that could be better there. No, the, that's the only amendment that I would want. I would say a person to have an office, whether the LOC one chairman or minister or deputy or any, president. Or MP or anything? must have the requisite uh, qualifications, economic, rather academic. And they would earn, end at a degree of university. And there some Only villages. those should be qualified. And there are some villages without a degree. Would, wouldn't you have put that Then they man so LOC1 <laughs> and they become secretary of the local LOC1, they become LOC2s. That the LOC CD, I would insist on A level, and on the C5, he must have a degree. That would be my minimum. You, you see, you are, you are compelling me to, every answer you give me creates a question. Haven't you seen the elites missing this country and therefore? you are overrating education in regards to service delivery. No, I am not overrating it. If a man has a degree... Because I have seen professors uh, missing please things. Please listen to me. <laughs> if a man like Norman has got a degree, and he's not corrupt, because he's not the only that degree which qualified you, there so are other addition, factors. Mm. Your integrity, mm. your rate of performance. I was taught by a university with three degrees in the UK. Mm. He was so lazy. <laughs> with his three degrees. I never used to follow his instructions. <laughs> but he had the three degrees. Because to be a leader, you have other qualities. Compassion. Mm. You have integrity. You believe in something like God. Mm. So it is not just the degree, it is just the beginning to identify who is possible. But he is not a certainty. 
We have had an MP with a degree who has been convicted of theft. <laughs> Let me tell you, we have a case going on now between the Chief Justice and, and, um, and, um, and the judge Chisache. by the name of Chisache. Mm -hmm. My view, there's some corrupt, uh, corrupt lawyers who has suggested that they should be reconciled. Mm -hmm. I have advised that the Chief Justice, though, I can tell you, I wrote to him, mm -hmm. I said, how can you be in the court fighting with your own junior Chisachi? And this, the way you are saying what she has done, she should be retired in the public interest. You should be moving the uh, Judicial Service Commission to remove her in the public interest. Why don't you suggest that they remove both of them in public interest? But uh, now you are signed to them. Now <laughs> he has done nothing. <laughs> yes. He should also be removed. Both of them should be both removed. Both of them to be removed in public interest. That is now my view. <laughs> because since I wrote to him, and his secretary said they have received my letter, he has never contacted me. So he is equally incompetent. And imagine no, suppose both we wash the dirty linen under the carpet mm -hmm. and they remain chief justice. And the other one remains, remains judge of the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. And they continue fighting. Because they will continue. Mm -hmm. Have we gained anything? Nothing. So the only logical way now, and the UP people outside, Help me. Both must be removed in the public interest. I think in a way, the Chief Justice was about to retire. I'm sure he's getting to, to 70 years. Mm. So he should be retired earlier in the In the high court, the chief justice. Drawing an example, they should make at least one from the Supreme Court or from the Court of Appeal, chief justice. And in my, my small observation, there are many excellent judges of the Court of Appeal who and are suitable of the to be chief justice, justice and, the and they were proud of them than the current ones. Okay. The current ones are a disgrace, a disgrace and the same, especially when the chief justice tears even to respond to my data saying, you are choose the other one or being disrespectful of you, doesn't obey other judges. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she should go in the public interest, not you reconcile. One of my last questions to you, mm -hmm. drawing a line from your cooperation and, and or experience from the LOC one chairperson of your troubled uh, land, for yes. lack of another word, mm. do you think they know their roles as local leaders? Do I think what? Do you think they know their roles and responsibilities as oh, in the entire council? Oh my goodness. You should see the interview they gave on NBS. The chairman, LC one, LC one, the sec the secretary, LC one, and the former chairman, Mr. Jimmy Chimera. Please ask NBS to show that interview again. They were brilliant. Mm. They spoke even better than these crooked lawyers <laughs> who represent people. Go and interview them, they are still there. They don't accept bribes. You see somebody say, these LOC ones you are, uh, you are defending are also corrupt. Not mine in a day way. <laughs> you tell me anyone who has been corrupted. If, if Bazira could uh, corruptly give the money, 
they wouldn't be saying that land belongs to Kanyamba. They would be saying it belongs to, to Bazira. But they are incorruptible. So, That's why I'm asking the minister to go with me and the interviews. Them. And they will tell the, pres uh, the prime minister that this land belongs to Kanyamba. Then we see what the Mr. Dr. Chiwanuka will do about it. <laughs> okay, our viewers, we have, uh, we have like three or so minutes to conclude this, uh, this show. But I, want to, I don't want to go away without asking you your opinion. And that's how things begin in Africa. It begins through a rumor, an article. We have heard from some legislators in Kenya suggesting that the Kenyan constitution be amended to ensure that there are no term limits anymore. You are joking? Yes, it's not a joke. It's already, it's a, it's a public document, a public suggestion. I am shocked <laughs> by and that Aruto, statement. They because as you know, the judicial provisions of the Kenyan constitution, the commonwealth panel of eminent judges, of which I chaired, recommended those in the, relating to the judiciary, intact. They never amended that. Mm -hmm. Unlike in Uganda, where I recommended, and they are still in the cold storage, without any word from the president, the minister of justice, or the judicial service commission. So, if that is so, I am shocked about it. And I hope it will be defeated magnificently when it is brought in the Parliament of Kenya. Okay. It is absurd for anyone in Kenya knowing the history of their country, the history of Tanzania and the history of Uganda, we have always been very close to suggest that Time limit should be removed. It is very, very a dangerous proposal, and I hope to be killed in the bud. Okay, our uh, viewers, we, we we definitely close from here. But to say um, next week, I don't want to use the word if. Let me use when. When the minister of land comes here, by God's grace, we shall broadcast. Both of them, Justice Kanyahamba and his visitor at that time, before they head to that uh, land. In the event that he doesn't, still we shall broadcast Justice Kanyahamba. And in particular, we shall tackle the Bill of Rights, uh, definitely that's chapter four, about, uh, about rights and freedoms in the 1995 Constitution. May you. No say, man. Yes, sir. If Honorable Doctor, uh, what is his name? Minister of Did you Minister say Mr. Lands? He's the one who Mayan, asked for this. Mr. Mayanja, Honorable Mayanja. Mayanja. If he doesn't come next Wednesday, you may question us many questions. But if we don't go to the land and he's physically sees that it is my land where Bazira is constructing a road, if he doesn't warned Mr. Sasso, engineer Sasso, that you have forfeited all the rights in Kanyamba's land and stop building structures on the land he leased to you when it contained goats, chickens, and the pigs. Then we shall have proved that you and I, what we are talking about the governance in Uganda, is absolutely correct and irrefutable. Do I even have anything useful to add? <laughs> the answer is no. See you next week. Thank you. <laughs> you have come. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. 
Real Talk.